In his long career as Chief Justice of the United States, spending 34 years, John Marshall always strove for excellence. He ever sought to promote respect for the law and the courts, and he continuously endeavored to advance the concept of human dignity. His ideal of government was noble, almost reverent. He once said that the principles of good government are a strict adherence to justice and public faith and a steady adherence to virtue. Marshall liked people and was well liked in return. He had a most affable and engaging manner and he never appeared arrogant or overly impressed with his own importance. The story is told that he was on the way home from the market in Richmond one day, dressed in nondescript clothing, when he encountered an elderly man carrying a large turkey. The man asked Marshall for help, and Marshall carried the turkey to the man's door, refusing a proper tip. The man was appalled when a bystander asked him if he knew his benefactor was the Chief Justice of the United States of America. Marshall hoped, upon his retirement, to return to Fort Cure, the county of his birth. Plans were made to build an addition to the home of one of his sons for his use. But his hopes could not be fulfilled. One Sunday afternoon in June 1835, while walking from his home in Richmond to visit Polly's grave in a nearby cemetery, he collapsed from exhaustion and was carried home by two men who happened to pass by. He was taken to Philadelphia for medical treatment, but died there on July 6, 1835, with Polly's necklet, locket, still around his neck. To gauge the extent of Marshall's legacy, one need only guess what this country would have become without him as Chief Justice. Had John Adams left the choice of a Chief Justice to Thomas Jefferson, as the latter thought should have been the case, Spencer Roan, a member of Virginia's highest court, most likely would have been Jefferson's choice. But Roan, like his mentor Jefferson, believed we should have a weak central government with the prime power vested in the states. Marshall, on the other hand, like his mentor George Washington, believed in a strong central government with residuary power vested in the states. I have only one question for you. Where do you think we would be today had Spencer Rowan and not John Marshall become Chief Justice of the United States in 1801? I think the question answers itself. Without a strong central government, we could not have become the most powerful force for good the world has ever known. A recent biographer has said that Marshall would be the unanimous choice for the title of the definer of a nation. Oliver Wendell Holmes said, if American law were to be represented by a single figure, skeptic and worshiper alike, would agree without dispute that the figure could be but one alone, and that one John Marshall. And I say, there can be no doubt that we are a nation governed by a rule of law because John Marshall lived. And for that greatest of all legacies, he is entitled to the internal gratitude of every American. You all have paid me the highest compliment any audience can pay a speaker. I hadn't heard a call. I haven't seen anyone move. I haven't seen anyone make a face. I thank you for listening to me.